Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. I'm so sometimes I think to myself, what shall my next video be? What shall I do? Because you know that aside from actually recording and editing and doing everything else to get the videos up, you also have to come up with ideas for these videos. And sometimes it's not just as simple as just sitting down and talking. Sometimes it is, as you can tell with some of my editing skills and speaking abilities. But I thought, I was thinking to myself, what should I do? I've got a few ideas in the pipeline. I've got a few notes written down about ideas that I want to put into videos. And then I clicked on one button on YouTube, up pop straight away <laughs> this one. And I thought, okay, well, drop everything. That is it. That's the one. That's So I jumped straight on, gave it a quick watch. Because unlike other people, I do watch things before I react to them. Because you need to know what you're talking about, right? Okay, so enough of the chitter chatter. This one came up and I thought, what in God's name? Jonathan Jolie's own channel his own channel, his second channel, and he, the title says it all really, Edie's story, and I thought, oh my bloody well God, oh my bloody well, oh my good God, oh my giddy God, oh Jesus God, all those things, right, so, I mean, I don't really need to show you the video at all I think I mean that you can kind of guess where it's going with this but it gets worse trust me so let's have a little look through it and see what we can discover from this fabulous non-exploitative video that Jonathan's putting out putting out for us. My name is Jonathan and my name's Edie and together we're GD but what are we doing? Our latest TikTok did 20 million views. <gasps> if you haven't seen the video, head over to our TikTok account. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I haven't seen it and I don't want to watch it. I can't be bothered. That's not a good start, I know. But it's just the same old, same old. It's talking about Edie and him, she, her being transgender etc that that's the whole thing and it got 20 million views i wasn't one of them john sorry to disappoint you but i'm just not not that into you um it's the same name as this channel at jonathan jolly what's the main difference would you say between this guy this guy here and you now what is the main difference probably like the hair <laughs> the hair yeah <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm not laughing, John. You may well be laughing, but I really, really am not laughing. The reason why he didn't, she didn't get the the whole what you were trying to say is because he, she didn't get it. Okay, he, she is not mentally developed enough to be understanding this sort of thing. And I don't mean whether or not she identifies as a boy or a girl. I'm not getting into that. I just mean that she doesn't get when you say things like, what's the difference between that boy and this person now? She doesn't get it. Does, I, don't, I don't know how many ways I can say it, but yeah. What is your school life like now versus back, back when you were that little guy? Oh, it's definitely different. People are calling me Edie. I have more friends. Well, I didn't have as much friends. So I had Jupiter. When you used to play with Jupiter, you were alone a lot of the time and you leaned on having an invisible friend to make you feel kind of comfortable and when you were scared, she would be there. Do you feel that you don't need her anymore? Yeah, I don't need her. I'm getting braver. Okay, interesting that you should drop that one in there, John. You're saying that Edie had an invisible friend. You mean just like you? So is it she had the invisible friend based on your story or was it your story that was based on Edie's story because yes you could possibly both have an invisible friend that got you through the hard times and everything but isn't it possible as well that 
one of you is not quite telling the truth. I'm not saying that Edie's lying. I'm just saying that it could well be some form of manipulation, if I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> I have more friends, like more friends, and I'm more confident with stuff. That was when I was little, I was like so, so shy, even though I wanted to perform on stage still. And what about now? Oh, now I'm way, I'm way better than before. Yeah, if you could go back to you four years ago, this little, the little fella on the picture there, and you could give yourself five pieces of advice, what would they be? Be a bit more confident, don't hide who you are. Nice. Well, it's kind of like the first one, like, show yourself, like, tell your parents instead of just hiding it and saying I want to be a boy, like that massive haircut I got yeah. before lockdown. Sorry about that. Going back to your previous... Uh, yeah, John, no. I'm willing to believe whatever nonsense that you spout, but if you think that I'm going to believe that you asked... Edie to to name five things and he or she reeled off all those instances just off the top of her head I don't quite think so just how rehearsed was this John remember this channel's all about acting isn't it statement you didn't tell anyone no I'd say I know Victoria's secret. Can you want to believe? Get allies. Allies. I'm an ally. <laughs> if you feel like you're the only, you're, no one else understands how you feel, right? And you think that I'm the only one that can feel this way. Yeah, it's because when I was in, I, I just thought I was the only one like myself. And you, and you looked around and you thought, no one else must feel like this. And that is why you think, that's when you start to feel that I'm the problem. Right? So you decide to, you know what, I'm going to conform. Do you know what conform means? Kind of. It means you're going to, I'm just going to try and fit in. I'm going to try and, like you said, I'm going to be a boy. Because everyone's telling me that. Fit in with everyone else. Exactly. Because I'm, I'm not, I, I didn't look like one of the girls. Mm. I look like one of the boys, but I didn't want to be one of the boys. So I got really confused, and so I tried to fit in with one of the boys. Explain to people who may be watching this, who may be you a couple of years ago. Okay, no, John, he is eight. She is eight. So I'm never going to get that right. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. My, my, my head's going to explode soon. She is eight years old. She does not have to explain to your fans, to the thousands of people that are watching right now, she does not have to explain shit to them. Because she is eight, it is not her responsibility to have to shoulder that burden of helping the rest of the internet. It's not on her. It. How many times can I explain that to you? Okay. And how would you know that you are in the wrong body? I thought I was a boy, but I just knew there was something missing. Sometimes, still now, I think, why can't I just try and be a boy for one day? But I just can't do it. For me, I'm a non-binary person. I don't feel like a boy, but I don't feel like a girl either. It's not something like trans. I don't want to be a girl. I don't wake up and be distraught about my body. I don't mind having a willy. I'm attracted. I'm sorry, what? Don't, just don't ever say that again on a family channel. Ever, please, just don't. It's bad enough that you're saying it in front of your, your eight-year-old child, but, you know, that's between you, you and your family. Just don't be saying this sort of thing on family channels. It gave me a little bit of an ick, I've got to be honest with you. To women, so I'm in the perfect body for me to... You wouldn't like to be gay. Being gay is not something you, you like to be. I've got to say, John, why did you leave that bit in? Because whilst you know you're trying to get across i maybe you thought the best way to address the the wider lgbtq situation is by getting your your child to to ask a, a mildly offensive question and then answer it because 
I don't I don't know why you did it, to be honest. Maybe that was your reasoning. But when you're trying to explain how hard it is to be trans and trying to get over that stigma, but also at the same time be mildly offensive to gay people, you know, I don't think that was the right approach, if I'm being honest with you. You either are or you're not. But some people will try to um, dismiss how you feel. Okay, so you're just a boy who likes to wear dresses. Oh, you're just a boy who doesn't like sports. I don't know people refer like that as a boy. Oh, you're just a boy that likes dresses. Like on the internet, it says little girl, which I really like. Yeah. Okay, that is so sad and so shameful of you, John. Absolutely shameful. Your eight-year-old child upset because people call her a little girl on the internet. In what platform is she seeing these comments which call her a little girl? At what point do you wake the fuck up and realise that what is what she's just said there is because of you? It's not because of the people that are actually saying that she is a little boy or whatever or a little girl or, or anything like that. It's because you are showing it to her. You are the one that is showing her the comments and letting her read them. I'm not quite sure why that's so difficult to understand. It is the God's honest truth. And that this is one of the reasons why so many people are up in arms about what you're doing. Because <laughs> imagine allowing your child to read hate comments about themselves. You're absolutely insane. Insane. Yeah. You you yeah, so so then that means that your preferred pronoun, right, is she her. But everyone nowadays refers to you as a girl, right? Yeah. They're not they're good at my name, but not so good as she her and stuff. See I felt that that was very much um like you are drumming it into her. The, about the she her your pr pronouns are she her and m much less about what she she actually thinks and what she feels it's more about what you are projecting onto her that's the way i saw it it's it was like you are this or you feel this imagine little you watching this video it's hard because I don't, I didn't know how I, like, I thought I was meant to feel one way. I didn't know how to feel. I, I didn't even know how to describe how I felt. Just how upsetting actually is this? Am I the only person that this is affecting? Because how incredibly upsetting. He, John has got his child, his eight-year-old child, sat there in front of the camera explaining to the entire world how she felt being trapped in a boy's body it just is absolutely mind-blowing it, it really is upsetting to listen to but how is he doing it how john john what are you doing honestly if this is how he's felt and how she's felt throughout her eight years of life let her get on with it in peace and quiet and don't thrust it in front of the cameras because imagine in 10 years time he's she's 18 she decides that she no longer wants to be a girl i'm not saying it's going to happen i'm not doubting her how she feels now but when it if it happens in 10 years time she no longer wants to be a girl it's going to be incredibly difficult to come back from that because the world knows. So how does that make you feel John? Please address this in a video. Because it really is a difficult thing for me to get my head around. Imagine all your little minions trying to get their heads around it too. So to get another perspective in the conversation. Let me introduce you to Amelia Tomasina. Pull in a chair. Welcome to Dee Dee and Jonathan show. You two are the future generation of this planet. 
You know, I've had my time, right? I am in my 40s now, but you guys are only starting out and you guys are going to define this planet, define all I the rules. 50, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> you guys are going to be the lawmakers. You guys are going to be the policy no, makers. You guys, are, you guys are going to be the government. You guys are going to be what the if entertainment. I get, like, really crap job when I'm older? Doesn't matter. Your generation. Tell us how you feel. Who are you? A person. A person. Like it? Like it? Are you a girl or a boy? Mm, I don't. So girl, boy, and rather not say. Yeah, that's like, yeah. Yeah? Is that how you feel? Yeah. Yeah? You don't feel like either or specifically one or the other? Wow. John, do you know what you've just done? You've made it so that your other child, your eldest child, can't even... She didn't actually want to say how she feels. I don't believe for one second that she'd prefer not to say her gender. You've drummed it in so much in the, in that house that, you know, all this is, it's not normal to want to be a boy or a girl. You have to be something else. And I'm not saying it's wrong for other people to want to be whatever they want to be. But in that house, they have drummed it in so much that she did not want to say whether she felt like a girl or not. You could see it in her face. She just did not want it. She climbed up. She didn't want to say it. And that's that's terrible. I can't, yeah, I've had enough of this. He goes on to ask her a bunch of other questions similar to that. How do you feel about wearing dresses and stuff like that? And, you know, similar responses and stuff so you can see what's happening in that house it is quite a toxic environment to be growing up in because you know i know i'll get hate if i go against the grain but i think a lot of people do think that jonathan is kind of exploiting Edie's situation which obviously is the case because they um Every opportunity he gets, he just gets on the camera. Like, this is Edie's story. Imagine using her own personal story for your own financial gain. Imagine that. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. So, thank you so much, everybody, for joining me today. Please come back again and again and again. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up and the comment button down below. Comment something down below, please. Thank you. And come back again soon for another video. Take care and bye-bye.